Hi, my name is Catherine Ray, and today I will be telling you about arithmetic and the homotopy groups of spheres. Soon after most of the Ravenel conjectures were resolved, Adams remarked that at one time it seemed that homotopy theory was entirely without system. Now it's almost proved that systematic effects predominate. My work shows a new systematic phenomenon. It shows that the essential complexity of the KH local category for all topologically relevant heights is captured by a quotient of a regular representation of a cyclic group. And by topologically relevant, I mean what's written in purple. Uh, topologically relevant for odd primes, that is, of course. <laughs> All right, now if you're curious about what that means, you'll have to stick around. So what are we trying to understand? I should also mention perhaps that my thesis overcomes a 40 year old computational stalemate on trying to understand the Lubin Tate action. So we want to understand the Lubin Tate action in order to understand the homotopy groups of the KH local sphere. The problem with this is that the Lubin Tate action, directly computing it, not even a little bit tractable. But there's hope due to work of Hen, computing it for Maxwell finite subgroups might be enough. But there's another issue that even calculating for finite subgroups was intractable uh, for height greater than two. So how did people do it for height two? Well, we used elliptic curves and the elliptic curves provide a geometric model for height one and height two. They provide a geometric model of the Lubin Tate action. So what does that mean? Well, the Lubin Tate action, well, okay, it means this. We take the modulized stack of elliptic curves. This is a stack with a huge amount of structure. We take a point. So we look at the elliptic curve sitting above that point and we look at its automorphism group. This automorphism group also acts on deformations around that point. And we can understand that action very concretely using the geometry restrictions imposed by them being elliptic curves. So once we understand the action of the automorphisms of the curve on this deformation space, we can project it down to just understanding the action that is induced on the moduli space itself. Then we can complete at that point and we get an action of a finite group on a formal scheme. And it turns out to be the Lubin Tate action. So that's what I mean by geometrically modeling the Lubin Tate action. It means constructing a moduli stack of curves such that when you trace the action of the automorphisms on this curve all the way down, this action actually is the Lubin Tate action. It isn't, <laughs> you need, you, this isn't generally the case. You need to show that it's the Lubin Tate action. Okay, so what are maximal finites of the Morava stabilizer group? What kinds of things are we working with here? Well, I'm showing you this to justify to you that for odd primes, if you're wondering what topologically relevant meant, I meant that for odd primes, Maxwell finite subgroups in Morava stabilizer group only have non-trivial p-cyclic components, so they only have p-torsion that's non-trivial in these heights. So that means that the group cohomology of these finite subgroups for these heights these are the only ones that don't totally vanish above H0. So that's what I mean by topologically relevant. And I've made you this handy dandy little diagram so you can look at it and kind of see what's previously been done. <laughs> and I'm claiming to you that my thesis, um, and this is a diagram of the KH local category, that my thesis is covering for odd primes um, all of the topologically relevant things. All right. So let's construct a geometric model. Okay, so starting with height p minus one, which was done by Gorbunov and Moholwald 40 years ago, we're gonna build our model off of theirs iteratively. So what they consider is an Artin Schreier curve C. And an Artin Schreier curve is simply a curve that's a CP Galois cover of P1 over a characteristic P field. But there's more than just that map down to P1. And in fact, what we want to consider and deform is not the map to P1 that's used to define it, but the degree P minus one map instead. So let me, let me emphasize this point because it's very important. If we deformed the CP Galois piece, that is looked at CP Galois covers over P1, then the action 
of CP would fix the underlying moduli space because each fiber is CP Galois. So the action of CP sends each fiber to itself. That's so it's it's reducing to a trivial action on the moduli space, which is very different from the wildly non-trivial Lubin Tate action. And the correct thing to look at that ends up actually geometrically modeling is looking at the action of CP on the ramification points of this degree P minus one map. So what that means for us is the action of CP here is, is acting on zero, one, and two, and it's keeping infinity fixed. Okay, great. But we can iteratively build on these. There are these things called Art and Schreier VIT covers, and we can consider those instead. So for an Art and Schreier VIT cover, which is defined by being the CPK Galois thing, we can consider instead uh, this non-Galois map to P1, which is, in fact, of degree of the height that we are interested in. And that is no coincidence. So we're going to, we call that map pi two, and we're going to consider deformations of that map. So just to give you an idea of kind of what was known when I started working on this, uh, I will tell you this lemma, which is that we didn't even know that these curves had a one-dimensional sum end of the correct height. This is just information about the curve itself, not about any of the maps to P1. So first I had to show that. All right. so. We have that now. And in fact, it turns out uh, that this, this deformation space deforming this map pi two to P1 models the Lubin Tate action. So this actually is the Lubin Tate action. <laughs> and further, this moduli problem is represented by a ring lambda, which has a really simple presentation as a gamma representation. Gamma is the Maxwell finite subgroup of the Morava stabilizer group of the height h that's topologically relevant. OK, so what does lambda look like? What is modeling the Lubin Tate action give us? <laughs> so lambda looks like, as a gamma representation, just a simple, like just, just the symmetric algebra of this kernel of regular representations of CPK this map from CPK to CPK minus one. So, okay, fine, wonderful, good. Here's what, it, here's what it buys us. It buys us that as gamma representations, Morava E theory is in fact isomorphic to this very simple regular representation of a, fi a finite cyclic group. Uh, and then we have to invert the discriminant of the curve that I described above and also complete at the ideal defining the neighborhood of C. You might think, oh, that's going to make it all complicated. No, it commutes with cohomology, so we're fine. That means that we can just steamroll right ahead. And I will again state the intuitive summary I put at the beginning, which is that the elusion, elusive p-torsion information of the KH local category is ultimately discernible in a quotient of the regular representation of a cyclic group. OK, so what does this buy us? It's, it's cool and it shows us this new systematic like effect that affects all of these heights simultaneously, all the topologically relevant heights simultaneously for P odd. But what does that buy us? Well, it instantaneously buys us Naves theorem, which describes this uh, action of the Maxwell finite subgroup for H P minus one on E theory. And yes, those are the alpha, beta, and delta that you're familiar with from the atom spectral sequence. Okay. And this action of CP on P minus one, it has historically proved to be very useful. In fact, it was used by Ravenel to resolve the covariant variant one problem for primes greater than or equal to five. But you'll notice the prime three isn't there. And that's because it doesn't work for the prime three. But it's thought that the P squared information for height P times P minus one will resolve the unknown P three case. That's conjectured to be so, which means that we can start to approach it now. And um, that buys us the following. Uh, sorry, I guess I should say that, okay, great. We have lambda is a symmetric algebra of this very simple regular representation, but it is a symmetric algebra, which means we have to deal with the Kazool resolution, but it's not a big deal to deal with this Kazool resolution. And um, Eva Belmont and I conjecture that, I mean, it's basically a theorem except for a possible D3 we haven't resolved yet, um, that this Kazool spectral sequence collapses on the first page, which means that we have the E2 page of the spectral sequence, which is thought to 
work out for us. So that's all. <laughs>